The Tennessee Lady Vols officially have their new head coach to replace Kelly Harper. They have hired Kim Caldwell, whose original name is Kim Stevens, coming out of Marshall to replace Kelly Harper. Caldwell just spent one year at Marshall. In that one year, she led them to a 26-7 and record and a Sunbelt Conference title. Before that, she had spent, I believe you, it was seven years at Glenville State. Every single year but one there, she won the Mountain East Conference title there. She also won the Division II National Championship in 2021-22. She made the Division II Final Four in 2022-23 before taking over at at Marshall last year. This is a very intriguing hire. Danny White, another once again, went completely out of left field for this hire. Everybody was talking about Becky Hammond. Everybody was talking about Lindsey Gottlieb. Everybody was talking about the potential of, I was talking about Yolette McPhee McQueen. People wanted to shoot high and go for Don Staley and Kim Mulkey as if that was possible. It's not. And other people were looking at people like Jeff Walsh or Wes Moore. And Danny White, just like he did with the Josh Heupel hire, didn't leak anything, played it very close to the best, and shocked everybody by hiring Kim Caldwell out of Marshall. And also just like the Josh Heupel hire, he went straight for offense. Um, for those who don't know, Kim Caldwell runs a very up-tempo offense, is very big on scoring. It's going to be, it's a total and complete departure from the Pat Summit era, the era of defense and rebounding and winning on the block, which is which obviously produced legends in the paint, like from Bridget, from Bridget Gordon, Shamika Holdsquall, obviously, to Candace Parker, and anybody else you can name in between. I mean, the Lady Vols. Tamika Catchings, they've always dominated in the paint. This is going to be a much more floor spacing type of offense that's really moving Tennessee forward into a modern era of women's basketball. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch, guys. It is a departure from the Pat Summit era, finally. Danny White did what needed to be done, and he broke from the Pat Summit family. This is the first hire since Pat Summit that was not either Pat Summit or somebody who played or coached under Pat Summit. So he has completely severed ties, not severed ties in terms of her legacy, but in terms of moving the Lady Vols forward, he has severed ties from the Pat Summit family. He is finally trying to move Tennessee into the modern age. And this is a big hire to do it. This is an incredible hire. Now, if people are going to have some drawbacks, Caldwell has spent almost her entire career in the state of West Virginia. And I mean, literally. Her entire career. She was born in Parkersburg, West Virginia. She went to Glenville State, which is in West Virginia. Played there from 2007 to 2011. She then went and coached as an assistant at Ohio Valley, which is also in West Virginia. But and, and then she spent the last and then she spent eight years at Glenville State before the last year at Marshall, which is how she got the Tennessee job. But she did spend four years in California. She was an assistant, interestingly enough, at uh, Sacramento State. But outside of that period as an assistant at Sacramento State, she has been nothing but, and I mean nothing but a, ten, a uh, West Virginia coach over the years. So this is a very interesting hire by Danny White. I want to know what all went into it. Danny White, again, has a pretty good track record of finding a coach that nobody else wanted and proving that he's smarter than everybody else. And this hire was a good hire. And in terms of resume, I mean, I will say this. You guys want to know what happened at Marshall? She took over a team that I'm just going through. I'm just going through the last six years before she took over. Marshall was led by somebody named Tony Kemper. Tony Kemper went nine and 20, 17 and 15, 13 and 17, eight and 11, 15 and 13, and then 17 and 14. And then she takes over. And in one year, she leads them to the Sun Belt regular season tournament title. She leads them to the Sun Belt regular season title. Excuse me. She leads them to the Sun Belt tournament title. And then she leads them into the NCAA tournament. Now, yes, they do get blown out by Virginia Tech in the NCAA tournament. But again, levels here. We're talking about her coaching at Marshall. They lost to Virginia Tech, a top 25 team. But the truth of the matter is, that's really impressive. And it's really impressive what she did at the, at obviously the um, the Division II level at Glenville State. Two Final Fours, a national championship. Those things matter. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Division II coaches that never get noticed for their work. And I think you're kind of seeing a renaissance in that across all sports. I mean, Kalen DeBoer got noticed for what he did at the NAIA level years ago. And now he's at Alabama. I mean, if guys can, if coaches can win at that level, there's no reason to think they could win at 
the top level. I know people will bring up recruiting. The Lady Vol program really recruits itself, guys. I don't think there's going to be that much added work she has to do on that. And again, I mean, I'm just looking at Glenville or what she did at Glenville State. 2016-2017 won the Mountain East regular season title. 2017-2018 won the Mountain, Re Mountain East regular season and tournament title. 2018-2019 regular season and tournament title. 2019-2020 regular season and tournament title. 2020-2021 Made the NCAA tournament, bounced out in the first round. That was only uh, that was the COVID shortened year. She only they only went twelve and four that year. 2021, 2022. went thirty five and one. Won the MEAC regular season title, the tournament title, and the national title. And then in 2022, 2023, won the regular season and tournament title and went to the Final Four. This is an incredible level of success. I mean, this is an insane level of success for anybody. And it's not like. You could say that Glenville State has like this amazing history even at the Division II level in women's basketball. That's their only national championship at at the Division II level in women's basketball. So what she does is incredible. I think Danny White hit a low-key home run. And I know that's a weird phrase to say, low-key home run, because it's a quiet home run because it wasn't the splash how everybody expected. But it's one everybody's surpri pleasantly surprised with. I think people are going to be very happy with the move. This is one of the most exciting brands of basketball you can watch i'm pulling up marshall's stats right now um so just bear with me because i'm doing this on the fly as as we talk about this because marshall last year was an offensive juggernaut they were a fun team to watch this is kind of one of the most intriguing programs because again what we're talking about here is a offensive system that is a total departure and i mean a total departure from everything that Tennessee has prided itself on dating back to the beginning of the Pat Summit era. Marshall, just in total points, I'm pulling it up now, guys. It is on, if you look at averages, I mean, we're talking about a program that they shoot 42.5% from the field on the year. They had, they averaged 85.3 points a game. Yes, that's right. 85.3 points per a game. They make over 10 and a half threes a game. This is an offensive oriented team this is going to be a very 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 fun team to watch and again i think that tennessee danny white went for entertainment he went for youth he went for a proven winner i i, I don't think there's a lot of negatives you could say about this um you know and just to go to the message boards real quick um patrick Eady. Splash higher, high octane offense and pressure defense from a former D2 national title, ranked number three and three pointers made and one and threes attempted. That's true. Um, SW fan uh, says great hire. Bob Franklin can't wait to see the LVM's reaction. Gail Yates, Danny sees the bigger picture. Michael Palmer, the Lady Vols used to recruit itself, does it anymore? Recruiting was a big part of why Harper is gone. Well, there was a part. There was there were a lot of other factors, Michael, and why they weren't able to recruit under Harper. I think the system, the style of play, it's just not entertaining as the women's game gets into more floor space and then Kelly Harper goes more for a interior game. I think that had a lot to do with why they struggle recruiting. Um, and Harper did not have the credibility. Kim Caldwell actually is hired with more credibility than Kelly Harper is right now, if you think about it, given the track record. William York says, and Danny, we trust. And SW fan says, it's wild to see fans still defending Harper, uh, I'd argue Caldwell has a better resume already. I agree. I mean, I think making the NCAA tournament at the Division II level is kind of a big deal. That has to count for something. And this is a huge splash for them to be able to do that. Michael Palmer says the hire feels like Danny White just hoping she can recruit and hits her ceiling, not her floor. Daily Beacon compared it to Arkansas, which is not inspiring. You know, but again, there's so many other factors that go into recruiting, guys. Yes, there are some coaches that just flat out can't recruit. And that's you think Dan Mullen at Florida, that's why he was fired. But a lot of recruiting has to do with other exterior factors that are not about whether or not the coach themselves can recruit. I, I'm going to be honest with you guys on that. There are, and and it's, I got to be careful what I say here, but I've covered enough football hires to know this. It's overvalued in coaching hires. It, it really is. Rec the ability to recruit is overvalued. There's a base level you have to be willing to hit. But a lot of the recruiting successes you think you've seen coaches have to think they're great recruiters have much more to do with the infrastructure of the program they're at and the credibility the coach themselves has. Okay, so Nick Saban and college football, greatest recruiter of all time, 
but he was at LSU where you can wake up and get a class full of NFL talent because of the state of Louisiana and dynamics there. Then when he went to Alabama, he was a national championship coach at a top 10 program of all time. It became just very easy to top five program of all time. It just became very easy to recruit. I mean, you want to talk about things like Gino Oriam and UConn. Well, UConn has had, they had three people on one network, three graduates on ESPN2 the other night talking about the Iowa, um, the Iowa UConn game. That's because UConn's right next to Bristol. ESPN was a great selling point. It was almost a pipeline to promote UConn. That was a big advantage they had. Tennessee, Pat Summit recruited well over the years because the Lady Vols and the university and the state as a whole were among the first states in the country to embrace Title IX. That helped Tennessee recruit. Tennessee actually had high school women's basketball dating back to the 40s and the 50s. So it was already entrenched in the state more than it was in any other state. So there was a collection of high school talent to pick from when women's basketball got off the ground in the 70s that Tennessee had that almost no other program had in the country. So recruiting is a lot like that. And it has a lot more to do with the infrastructure of the program. Now, bad coaches can hurt recruiting. Coaches who struggle can hurt recruiting. Other issues can hurt recruiting. And so I, I, but I think if you get the right coach and I think if you make the right splash higher, the recruiting schools typically recruit themselves and coaches recruit themselves. And what I mean by that is I don't mean actual the work they do recruiting. I mean, their resume and their credibility is what ends up doing the recruiting in general. So I actually think this is a very underrated hire. This is a very good hire. Danny White really struck gold. Um, and he went for some youth. I mean, we're talking about somebody who I believe is, what, 34 years old? Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think Kim Caldwell is 34 years old. I mean, this is a very intriguing – this is a very intriguing hire, and it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Um, I mean, again, I, I, I don't – I can't stress this enough. She overnight turned around Marshall after it labored for six years as a bad program. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um and, and what she did at Glenville State before then, I mean, we're talking, I mean, this is, it's really hard to undersell what she did. Now, I'm as I'm talking to you guys, I'm actually pulling up Glenville State's basketball history before she took over there. Because again, if she took over in 2016, 2017, and I want to confirm that she took over Glenville State in 2016, 2017. Yes, she did. So I'm now going to go all the way back. Well, that's as far back as it goes, interestingly enough. Glenville State is 2016, 2017. So bringing all that up, I just have to say that this is actually, um, this is going to be a very, very, very exciting hire. It's a young hire. It's an offensive-oriented team. She's an offensive-oriented program, at an offensive-oriented program now. I think Tennessee has a lot to be excited about with this move. And by the way, Caldwell in 2024 won the Maggie Dixon Award for the Rookie Coach of the Year Award. And I think the they can only go up from here. We're going to talk a little bit more about this on Monday uh, with Dave Hooker. We'll be back on at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Ring the bell. Turn the notifications on. Tell a friend. We're doing a lot of great fun stuff here at Off the Hook Sports. This is part of it. Um, Smoky Mount Red, did they set a presser yet? Uh, I, I can't speak on that as I'm doing this right now. Uh, I don't exactly know when the presser will be. And Michael says, this is a great hire. This woman did amazing things at Marshall. She only had one player over six feet. Yeah, and, and she adjusted well. Um, Michael Palmer continue at least making the tournament, no less than Sweet 16s after year one, and needs to challenge her conference by year three. Michael, I think she might challenge it by year two. I'm just going to tell you that. Uh, South Carolina Scout Guy says, this is a high risk, high reward. I agree, but I don't really see much of the risk. I'm going to be honest, Essie Scout guy. I, I, look at her resume. Um, this is actually, I, I I don't think it's as much of a risk as you think. CMGM96 says, has Tennessee finally trying to get out of the Lady Vols player hiring scheme? I feel like trying to keep hiring alumni, it will only hurt the program. I think it's a great hire. I don't think the nature of hiring an alumni by itself hurts the program, but I think limiting your search options to alumni is what hurts the program. So I do agree with you on that. Um Michael, this is a great hire. This woman did amazing things at Marshall. Yep, Michael Palmer. We mentioned that. So it looks like Tuesday is the press conference. Yes, presser is Tuesday. We will cover that. But again, tune in tomorrow. We will be back on at 10 a.m. Eastern to talk about this right off the top. We'll talk about what Danny White was doing and what was going through his mind with this hire. Again, very exciting hire for Tennessee. I think Tennessee 
made a very risky move, but I do think it's going to be one that pays off in the end. It is an offensive-oriented team that is coming to Knoxville. A young coach in her 30s bringing a high-powered offense is going to make the Tennessee Lady Vols one of the most exciting teams of college basketball in the next 10 years. Watch it. It may actually be very, very, very fun to watch. Very intriguing. So you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the women's basketball game. Another point they make this, they announce this higher two hours before the women's basketball national title game. That's not a coincidence. They're trying to steal some headlines, but enjoy your high, enjoy your Sunday. Go watch the women's basketball game. Um, tell me who you think is going to win. I actually think this is a great time to make this hire because of the rise of women's basketball and what's been happening recently. So we will talk more about this tomorrow and what was going through Danny White's mind and all the inner workings that went into, into the hire. So thank you guys all for tuning in with Caleb Calhoun. This has been a presentation of off 